we are here with renowned artist Desmond Blair for the second time. Now, we had a great time the last interview. For our viewers who didn't see the last one, please check it out on the DW YouTube channel. Now, we discussed your powerful testimony of the challenges that you face coming up, you know, with the disability of having no hands and how you overcame it amongst, you know, a whole bunch of other trials you're telling us about to become this world class artist. Now, today, you know, during this podcast, you know, being the start of Black History Month, the Dallas Weekly wanted to ask you. What is going on with the black art culture in Dallas? Um, so I guess my history with black artists and the black art culture in Dallas goes back to when I was a kid. Um, I had an interest in art. I started with art when I was young, but my mom actually found the program at the South Dallas Cultural Center when I was about eight years old. Um, program was run by Miss Vicki Meek. It was a summer program. And I think my mom found it. She was a city employee. And so she found it through the city of Dallas. And, um, you know, by grace of God, I, was, I managed to become a part of that program and participated in it every summer. And so our instructors um, in that program were heavily involved in the arts community. Uh, Miss Vicki, Mama Vicki. Um, to a lot of us, she was really good about, you know, taking us, making sure we had the mentorship, the teaching, um, and exposing us not to the thing that we were good at. So for me, it was visual art, but just collectively surrounding us with African American creatives that were in Dallas. Um, so learning music, theater, dance, um, and the history that was tied to it and learning how to you know, just take all of those things um, to enhance our perspectives. And she's really good about that. But I think through my experiences with that program, it allowed not only me, but the other kids that went through that program to start to connect and and meet, you know, other, I guess, people who eventually became mentors in a creative space throughout Dallas. So, um, you know, through Ms. Vicky, uh, um, she took us over to the African American Museum. So we met Dr. Robson when we were all kids. And so um, just, you know, growing up through there and then you have kind of like this cohort. So I graduated in DISD. I went to Skyline, but I knew a lot of kids at Booker T, a lot of the teachers there. And just, you know, over the course of time, you kind of have this cohort that you just become a part of. And you have people before you that just kind of you stay connected with and they kind of grow you up. And so even my relationship with Pencil on Paper Gallery uh, here in Dallas, Emmanuel Gillespie, he was he was my first art teacher. Prior to him, I was just sitting in the living room drawing pictures, you know, or trying to draw stuff that I would see on TV. But, um, you know, it's just that program kind of connected a bunch of us you know, to different avenues and creatives to allow us to, to grow up. And, you know, even in my professional career, there are so many other artists that I know throughout the city uh, because of the South Dallas Cultural Center program. You know, you, this person is like two grades ahead of you when you're in school. But when you become a professional, it's like, oh, I know who that is because, you know, I was looking up to them when I was like eight years old, you know. Now, who are some black artists in the local Dallas area that inspired you? Man, it's a lot of them, but um, I would say one of them that I've known about since I was a kid is Jeremy Biggers. Uh, so Ms. Vicky used to talk about him a lot. <laughs> but um, Jeremy, I've known who he was since I was a kid. Um, and then just meeting other ones. So uh, Riley is another one. Riley Holloway, he's another artist I know. But he's always, I mean, he's always down to like share advice and wisdom. Um, Emmanuel Gillespie, Emmanuel and Valerie Gillespie, I consider them mentors now. Mama Vicky, she's mentor to us all, you know. And then I think for me, as an adult, seeing her 
as a creative because, you know, when I was growing up, she was so busy running that program. Like she would keep us in tune running the program. It's been eye opening for me to see her as a creative now, as an adult with the installation work that she does and, you know, just her relationships and, and the work, you know, shows she's done in Houston and Dallas, the things she's done with the Nasher. And so, um, it's allowed me to just see more of her and learn from her and just kind of watch and, and grow, um, in that regard. And then there are just, a, that's the thing that makes Dallas so neat. There are just like a list of artists that I've known and been able to share space with over the years. Um, I came, I can't give you a top 10 because I've learned something different from each one of them. Yeah. We were talking about two weeks ago and you went to one of the junior high schools, I believe. Mm -hmm. And you sometimes go to different schools mm -hmm. when you're at these schools, you know, you have these kids that want to be, become artists and painters. Mm -hmm. What do you tell them? I always tell them, you know, um, to not be afraid to try different things, uh, with regard to your art, because for the earlier on, I always thought, you know, pencil, paper, sketch pad, but then, you know, through the program at the South Dallas cultural center, like we were doing like clay sculpting and paint murals and music production and dance. And, and then from there, um, I was able to go to middle school at Griner and our teachers there, I had two art teachers, um, that exposed us to the same thing. It wasn't just like what I knew or what I had at home. We were doing like mixed media projects or like just uh, trying a bunch of different things like, uh, larger sculptures. We had this thing we were doing with the DMA my eighth grade year where we had to make like these sculptures, um, out of different materials. And so I think, you know, what, when I try to encourage kids is to, you, you may start with sketching in a sketchbook or something like that. Um, and you may want to do 2d art, but it's like, it's so many things. It's larger than even just like I paint portraits, but you can be a designer. You can be, you know, um, a user interface developer now, you know, you can design user interfaces, you can do websites, you can do graphic design, you can do so many things, you can do mix, mixed media, you can do sculpture, but it's just, I try to encourage them to not get caught up in one thing, but explore, you know, the arts as a whole. And I, I think it's good. I was, I was fortunate, I would say, because of the programs I was in, when you experience and you have like the music, the performance, the dance, all of that next to the visual, like I think all of that kind of interplay promotes just overall creative growth. To you, where does Dallas rank or compare among other black art communities in the U.S.? Now, would you recommend to other black artists to come to Dallas? And what are some noted black galleries in Dallas? So I would say Dallas is like a sleeper city when it comes to the arts and creativity. Um, and I, I say that going back to my like college, post-college experience, I was trying to like, oh, I got to go to New York or I got to go to L.A. Like there was that pressure to like move out there. And so for me, I went and spent some time in California for a little bit and then just kind of like looking at everything it didn't really make sense because the internet, we were getting to the point to where you could really use the internet to promote, sell your work and things like that. And I had studied a lot of that when I was in school, I had to do that. And so I was like, well, you know, the, just the cost, living expenses, materials, being able to support myself, it just didn't make sense. And so um, I ended up staying in Dallas, but what I think I found out, and the reason I say it's a sleeper city it wasn't hard to connect with other creatives. Like if you see somebody doing something or like, you know, a bunch of like artists would get together. There were like all of these little circles and pop-ups and things you could participate in and be a part of, even if you were just going like, I mean, I just go volunteer, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I didn't mind doing that. And I think that's what was so cool. It, it instilled to me is like neat. It's, it's just, it's not hard to reach out. You know, everybody is not in their like silos where you can't 
get a hold of them or intermingle with them. And I think for me, um, earlier on, that helps to promote growth. You know what I'm saying? And um, I've been fortunate you know, I live in a different area now, but even like with being in like the Frisco area, it hasn't been too hard to like reach out and connect and find the ways to get plugged in to like different areas. So Dallas, I would say mm, mo some people may not put it in their top five, but I think it's like a sleeper city because it is easy to connect with people here, you know. Now talking about your identity as an artist, do you feel your paintings are inspired by you being a black artist, an artist with a disability, with no hands, or is it colorless, none of the above? What inspires your work? So my subject matter, it, it varies depending on just kind of where I am at the time. Um, don't really limit myself to you know, just the African American experience, and that's because I have a limb difference, and you know, so like where I am right now, or the the series that I'm working on right now, I'm exploring that body image perception kind of hurdle that you have to overcome, um, and I just you know, just kind of getting my thoughts out. He, he, from a very young kid, I had to go into places where people would whisper, point and stare, but then you still have to find a way to develop the confidence, you know, to be yourself in those spaces, even when you feel uncomfortable. And so, you know, I try not to limit myself because how does that look, not only from an African-American perspective, not only from the perspective of an African-American male, maybe a woman, or maybe, you know, somebody of a different, race or background, like what is their experience? You know, what are their fears? Where are the overlaps? Where are the differences? And so I guess like for me, it's just, it's a combination of the two, but like I want to explore it from different points of view. You have been vocal about your faith as a Christian. How does being a Christian, how has that impacted or inspired your artwork? And what is the core message you feel God wants you to put out with this great talent he has given you. Yeah, I think as a Christian, like, um, you know, it, I kind of like, because of my background, I try to like focus on things that will bring people together, you know, and really um, it's not even just, you know, my my belief as a Christian, but just the example that I really think my grandmother and my mother set for me. And so um, I try to use my artwork to get people to, you know, to encourage, uplift, inspire, um, just like people from all different types of backgrounds, you know, because at the end of the day, um, something my grandmother was very big on, didn't matter who you were, where you're from, she sit down and have a conversation with you. And if I can do that, spark those conversations, because it leads to understanding, I think it makes all of us better. And so um, I just try to focus on, if anything, through my portraits, getting people to take a second look at somebody or look at the portrait or that moment. And I want them to write their own story and see how they relate to it. You know, why is this person in this moment? What are they feeling? How do I feel or, or where have I had those moments or those interchanges or whatever? And uh, pretty much just, you know, I even think about me being an artist and not having hands sounds paradoxical, but if that can be the conversation starter to get somebody to shift their perspective in a positive way, um, I think that's where my faith just kind of plays into my role as an artist because I want to lead people in that direction. Like, can we have awkward conversations, but then learn something from each other so we understand each other better, you know? I mean, you got some amazing work, you know, it's mm -hmm. powerful. Do you go into prayer and meditation? What, what inspires you to come up with these type of pieces that you do? Because you have a wide range. I mean, do you go into prayer? Or, I mean, how do you get these ideas? I mean, what is your methodology? Um, a lot of times, like the, the crazy part is I will see something and then I have a dream about it. 
it's been that way since I was a kid. Like I see something, I have a dream about it. And it's like, if I do what I saw in the dream, it typically comes out. To, and what's crazy is like, even when I'm stumped creatively, like if I'm in the middle of a painting and I'm stuck somewhere, like stuck on a certain part of it, I could be stuck for like a day or two and then I'll have a dream about it. And if I, it's just like the, I see what I need to do to work through that or whatever. And it's just, it's crazy because as far back as I can remember, um, you know, with my art, that was always how I, I solved those problems or it seemed like those solutions would come to me like in my dreams. And, um, it, and you just see it. I think it's hard to explain or put into words, but sometimes you can see something and it's like, if I paint this like this on this scale in this way, then I think it'll like capture an audience. Um, some of it is, you know, your education and your background, but then there's still that part of it, I think as a creative and being in tune where you just know, if I do this, this is gonna be it, you know? Now you are a single parent with two grade school children who live with you part-time and you also work a full-time job and you're an active artist submitting to art galleries. Now, how are you able to obtain the balance of all these responsibilities? Now, we were talking the other day, and you also told me that you have a son who has developed an affinity for art. Do you feel you need to create a rigid artistic discipline plan for him, or you feel you're just going to allow him to pilot that desire on his own and just encourage him? Yeah, when it comes to being a creative as a parent, it's definitely, I think this is a part nobody tells you. It's like when you become a parent, it definitely becomes a balancing act. And so now um, a lot of times I paint at nighttime, uh, but I think where I'm getting to is I wanna start, start painting in front of them because they see it and it's like part of it is done, part of it is done, part of it is done, and then it's a final painting. But um, just from my other friends that are creatives, like have them in the room. And I think it's good for them to see now, am I like, oh, when you grow up, you have to be an artist? No, but I do like to make sure supplies are available if they wanna, hey, how do I draw this? Or how do you do this? Or if I wanna learn how to use paint a certain way, it's like, okay, go get it. Well, let's go, I'll show you. But I think you, the, the thing is, if you are creative as a parent, you want to give them the same space that you had to explore. You know what I'm saying? Because you never know what will come out of it. They're different. Their minds will work different. And so um, even with projects I've, I've kind of done with them in the past, just experiment with them, they tackle things differently. Like I have one that's more meticulous and one that's more, it's like they just feel it and he just feels it and goes with it and it's like okay well it's working you know um but i think overall just whether they become artists or not just learning how to express yourself creatively i think is important um and i want to you know just if i can encourage that that's fine they do it as a hobby or they do it you know in their free time cool if they <laughs> are like nope i'm a scientist <laughs> That's cool too, but um, just exposing them to it because I think overall, just with children in general, which is why I like talking at schools, encouraging creativity along with other things, it's what helps us to to be able to solve problems when we do, you know, grow up, become adults, start careers and so on and so forth. It helps us get out there in the world and be able to solve and tackle problems. Now, give us an update on your recent art activities and where can we view and go purchase your art? You can purchase my work through Pencil on Paper Gallery, um, but this year when it comes to seeing my work, I'm in the studio this, this whole year. Uh, that's my goal. Um, you know, there are projects you take on as an artist, but like what I'm getting or starting to see is you know, just it's important to take the time to do the things you have written down in your journal. And so this year, um, 
it's kind of like I got my head in my hoodie and I'm just in my corner. And the goal this year is just to build an inventory of new work, um, tackling some concepts or themes that, you know, have been important to me. And, and a lot of it deals with having a limb difference, body image, societal acceptance because of those things. And then through just different lenses. And I want to explore what that's like. So if you want to see my work, I'll be actively posting what I'm working on throughout the year and working with pencil on paper gallery. Um, so they're working to, you know, they're my mentors. And so I'll be painting stuff, getting feedback, but I'm really working with this concept to create a larger body of work for an exhibition. Uh, hopefully next year we'll be ready. Um, and that's the goal just right now. Cause I want to try to hone in and tell those stories and just kind of really focus on that because it's something that's been in my journal for a while, but it's like, we got to get it out, express it. And then just kind of hopefully start some conversations, you know? And, um, because what I go back to, I was always, I know what it was like to be that little kid that had to go into a place when nobody else looked like you. And it's like, how do you overcome that fear, you know? And so that's the theme of just kind of where I am right now creatively and the, the types of portraits and things I want to work on. Cause I, I really want to explore that. I want you to tell me a little bit about that painting behind you. So this painting behind me, actually I'm part of a group online called uh, the Lucky Fan Project. And it, it started as like a Facebook group. I joined probably like seven or eight years ago, but, um, they didn't have, you know, Facebook wasn't a thing when I was a kid or when my mom was raising me, there were different like parent groups that she was a part of. But, you know, when you don't see other children with limb differences that often, and then even as a parent, it's like, well, how do you acclimate your child to the world that they're going to have to go out into? Um, so I joined this Facebook group probably about like seven or eight years ago, like I said, and it was neat because it just connected so many different people and perspectives and stories and things like that. And it's funny because like, I don't have hands, but you'll see somebody else with a limb difference and they'll share how they solved a certain type of problem. And it's just like, okay, I would have never thought to do it. I do this this way, but you do that that way. So it's, it's so many different perspectives out there, but then you have to overcome, you know, how you'll be accepted just when you, you get out, and become an adult and you have to take care of yourself. And so, um, this painting that I'm working on right now, you know, um, and I'll, there I'll be like a whole write up thing, I guess when I'm done. Um, but the young lady, she's like a, a high end fashion model with a prosthetic leg and a hand difference. And when you think about even being a, an artist and going through, you know, art school and programs, you know, you learn about like beauty standards and all of this thing. Like when it comes to photography, you learn about those things, but it's like, okay, when you clearly have something that's different, what is the beauty standard? Like, what is the, like, how do you, you experience that? And, I, um, that's just kind of the reason behind the Cause it's like to operate in a space where you have these like beauty standards and what people see or proclaim or, or acknowledge is like beautiful, you know, facial symmetry and all of these different things, but you have a physical difference. It's like, it poses the question, am I still beautiful? Mm -hmm.